Hey everybody. Good morning or good afternoon. Excuse me. Um, I slept in today. It's actually after one o'clock. I haven't slept in that long, but I slept in pretty late. I love to sleep in. It's one of my favorite things. So I do that as much as I can. Okay. Uh, I'm doing uh, sort of an earth tone pour for a friend and um, I got a new canvas. I rarely use new canvases these days because I'm trying to conserve all my canvases, you know, for, um, so I don't have to buy more. Um, I had to clean this mess up down here real quick. Uh, I'm gonna get, I had paper on the floor because I always drip on the floor and I, it's time to replace that. By the way, just so you know, um, if you need paper to like, uh, I put it around my pieces when I sell them to people. Saves me money on having to buy bags and stuff. And uh, I, so I just wrap them up in this paper. And uh, it, well, it looks like this when it doesn't have paint on it. And what it is is newspaper. Um, and you, they're called back rolls. And you get them at the newspaper place and they're very cheap. Like for a roll about that big around, it's like four bucks. And they last forever. So I usually go and get about three rolls and I use them for that. And I also put them on the floor in here and I just change them out ever so often when they get paint on them. And they help cut down on what I have to clean. And I'm all about cutting down on what I have to clean because I hate to clean. And especially in here because that means getting down on my hands and knees and it's just a question as whether I'm gonna be able to get back up. So I hate having to do that. But anyway, just so you know, you can get them at your newspaper um, places, you know, where they distribute newspapers. Uh, like ours is the Daily Sentinel. You just go there and tell them you need an end roll and um, They'll have them in there if they're like where I get them. They're very cheap and you can't beat it for um, Draping and you know putting paper down or for Packaging your work in then you don't have to pay for bags to Put stuff in and that cuts down on expense and I'm all about that too so I'm not putting out a base coat because I don't on these anymore um I have not had problems with that. Now I have a, a girl that I'm teaching and she was having a bunch of cells come up on the sides and causing her problems. And so I said, well, put a base coat down if you're having that issue. It's either that or perhaps you're using too much silicone. And um, so, uh, but I have not personally had those problems and uh, I've been doing this for quite a while now and it cuts down on expense because you don't have to put that layer of paint down. If I have a cell come up and go all the way down to the canvas, I just get some paint from the side and fill it in and it looks fine. Um, like I said, I've really had no issues. Um, so I continue to do that until, that's the way I do. I mean, if I can see a way that I might can cut costs or something, I'm going to do it. And if it causes me an issue, then I won't do it. But until I see an issue, I'm going to do it. And um, I do that on flip cups and swipes. I don't put down a base coat anymore. Um, now, if I'm using that Shelly Art inspired pouring medium, I will put down a base coat because um, on those, you want the paint to slide like with your hair dryer or with your breath or whatever you're using. And uh, I know that having a base coat down helps paint to slide. On these, I don't ever have an issue with it sliding. It slides just fine. But on those, I want all the help I can get. So I, I do put one down on those. But anyway, just so you know, FYI, you know, whatever. Um, I didn't know if everybody knew about those end rolls. That was a suggestion from my mother and it turned out to be a really good one because I've saved a lot of money that way. So I haven't been posting, I haven't posted as many videos as I usually do in the last two days because I've been working on these traditional paintings. And um, one of them is in there, I just resined it and I've got to do some tweaking to it and then I'll show it to y'all. Um, and this other one I'm just starting. But they're beach scenes. They're for a friend of mine that just lost her husband and they love to go to the beach together. So I thought that was a nice thing um, to do for them. And um, I, it takes a lot of time for me to do those. They're not immediate gratification like these are. And I'm sort of into the immediate gratification part. So I sort of put off working on them. I have to be in a certain mood to be able to do it. And I'm yesterday I worked really hard on that one and got it finished and resined. But I mean, I'm better if I get into that, if I just stay into it and try to continue until I finish it because it's hard for me to go back when I've done this. You know, like if I switch and come to this, I'll want to do this all day long because it's just so much 
easier in the sense that you make something, you know, you start something, you mix, you make, and there you have your finished product and that sense of um, gratification right away. And um, so I'm, I'm, that's what I deal with. Well, it looks like all the paint's pulled down. Now, I put silicone in these cups in the bottom. And that helps when, um, for several reasons. Number one is it helps make more cells. And number two is it also makes it where you can see when you're, how far your paint's drained down. So you can know whether it's time to turn them over. We're always guessing and people are tapping on the tops and all that kind of crap. This eliminates the need for that. You can see when most of your paints run down, when it's time to turn them over. Plus, it adds more cells. I mean, um, with that extra silicone added in a different place, it contributes. So, um, I will put it in the cups a little bit, and then I'll just do a little squirt down in the bottom of these cups before I put my paint in. And then I put a little squirt on the top after I put my paint in. I'm all about the silicone. I think it really helps. I mean, um... Uh, it, I see no downside, so if something works and it's helping, then I'm going to do a lot of it. I'm sort of an extremist, I guess. Now, let's see how this table does, because I put something underneath the side over there to try to fix the slanting, and I want to see, um, I haven't really done anything on it. See, it's still sliding a little bit that way, but... I don't think that's because it's tilted. Because, um, see, I'm lifting it up and it's still going that way. Um, let's see how it does. Oh, crap. Oh, no. I don't want that on my blue beachscape. I knew I was going to get in trouble putting that right there. This is going to be a pretty one. I like the way the colors are mixing. All right. They all moved that way at first, but the question is when it stops moving, well, the question is will it stop moving? Yeah, see, look, it stopped. It's not gonna, it's not pouring off that end. At least it's not doing it real fast. <laughs> and I'll take that, that's good. That's definite progress, because it was just pouring off that side over there. Actually, this side and that corner, real bad. Look at those cool cells, oh my gosh. I love it. This one has a lot of that dark brown, burnt umber. It has copper. It has, um, I got a pack of the Deco Art Metallics. Um, two packs, actually. Crown Jewels and then just, uh, I don't know what the other one's called. But it's got copper. This has got copper in it. It's got the champagne gold. It's got 24 karat gold. It's got, um, pearl which is the whitish color, and um, it's got this uh, burnt umber and black. Those are the colors. All right, let's see what we got. I'm so excited to be working on a new canvas. Ooh. We take things for granted, y'all. I mean, um, things are, are different now, and and uh, I don't like it. I mean, um, I hear that things are going to be opening up in our area at least like next week is what I've heard. And I don't know that for sure, but that's what I've heard. And it sure would be nice because I don't like having to drive to Tyler to get supplies. That's an hour and a half from here. And it's either that or pay shipping and wait on it to get here. And I don't want to do that. This is beautiful. Um, I don't want to wait. I don't like to wait. I'm not a good waiter. I'm not very patient. And uh, especially when it comes to my art supplies, I'm very spoiled because I'm used to being able to drive five minutes down to Hobby Lobby and get most of what I need. You know, I mean, they don't have everything. You can't get Artist Loft there. I have to order those from Michaels or else go to Longview or Tyler. Um, but I met, I met some new friends on Facebook that live in Longview. So um, I have a Another reason I wouldn't mind driving there, I guess. Um, so, we'll see. Um, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is for one of, of my new friends. And uh, he said he likes brown, so I figured I'd do him something with a lot of brown in it. And then um, he likes blue, green, and yellow, so I gotta figure out something blue, green, and yellow to do. 
but I didn't think the blue, green, and yellow would go very well with all this brown. Um, sometimes you can mix brown with colors and it looks okay, but not blue, green, and yellow. I don't think that would be good. I'm just gonna, there's just kind of open spot down here I wanna fill in. And I think that's beautiful. I'm just trying to pour a little paint off because I do not want it to craze. And um, I've had some issues with these crazing lately and I'm pretty sure what it is, is that I'm not pouring enough paint off because um, I've been really happy with them lately. They've been uh, really pretty to me and I, I struggle when that happens. I don't I don't want to pour anything off. I love it all and I want to keep it all and so therein creates the problem. This one is just really pretty. I think this is the best earth tone pour I've ever done. I'll see if I can pour a little bit more off that corner over there. I'm not seeing a lot of movement though. Okay, it's down about the bulk of the paint is down about halfway down the canvas. I can see it moving now. But, um, yeah, there it is. I see it now. So there's still a little bit I can pour off. Definitely don't want this to craze because this is really pretty. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful day outside where I am in East Texas with all the pine trees and the rednecks. Um, we had some rednecks stuck out in our front yard last night. Some moron managed to run off the road, which I don't understand how you do that right there. It's just a straight road. But, um, I got up and the dog was barking like crazy and it's about midnight, I guess. And so I went out and looked and I saw these headlights out there and I was like, man, what is going on? And, um, so... I waited about 15 minutes and they didn't go anywhere so I called the cops because there's a bad trailer park down the road and they have issues with drugs and stuff and every now and those people will migrate down this way and my neighbor had them knock on his door and say they were broken down and the guy tried to break into his house and um, luckily he had a shotgun so that didn't work out for the bad guy. But I don't take any chances. Um, if somebody comes to my door in the middle of the night, I'm answering it with my 9 millimeter. Because um, we're out here in the country, and generally, if somebody comes to my house, you know, I know they're coming. You know, they're people that are expected. We don't have a lot of, you know, there's no reason for anybody to be pulling, parking and stopping and stuff like that around my house. Um, unless they're up to no good. And our cops are really good. They got there in like two minutes, it seemed like, two of them. And they blocked the road, and another car was coming down the road, and they ordered, and he stopped and got out, and they ordered him back in his vehicle, and so anyway, they pulled the guy out of the ditch, and I don't know, I guess he wasn't drunk or nothing, because I didn't see him arresting anybody, but I don't understand how somebody could run off the road right there. It's just a, it's a straight stretch of road. Uh, maybe he was looking at his cell phone or something. It's always that. Look at how pretty this is turning out to be. I love that 24 karat gold up in there. These other browns. It's a really pretty brown dominated piece and that's exactly what I wanted. How often do you do one of these and get exactly what you want? <laughs> it rarely happens. But I think it's really pretty. I like that deep brown, that burnt umber. It's a really pretty deep brown. And I didn't put any pigments in these. These are all just paint. Oh, I did put some interference gold in the 24 karat gold and in that champagne gold. Because I love how that 20, that interference gold, when you have a piece that can be gold dominated sort of, you know, that it doesn't matter if there's gold running kind of throughout it, like this piece. It's fun to use that stuff because it makes a really neat shimmering 
goldish effect that runs, you know, throughout the whole piece. And I think it's really cool. Just trying to squeeze out a few more little cells here and there. I think that is really pretty. Alright, guys. Let me get the phone down so y'all can see up close. Uh, I may have to do the... I think next I'll do another... Maybe a flip cup or maybe a, an open cup or a swipe because I want to do him the other one, the um, red, green, uh, no, blue, green, and yellow. See those little specks of gold in there? Those are the interference um, gold. It just kind of meanders in and out of everything. There's the 24 karat making lines. See there, those little veins. I just love those. Copper's real good about doing that too. But the interference just makes those little specks throughout. I only use it on ones that can handle that. You know, there's some pieces that you don't um, want little specks of gold all throughout. But most of them I do. I like gold. I think it's really beautiful in those things. I don't think there's many paintings that wouldn't be better without a little hint of gold put in there. But that's just me, so... Uh, look at those little round ones right there. Um, I don't do that with everything because not everybody is, you know, thinks the same way as I do. But um, I think most people like gold. It looks, it adds such a interesting, pretty side to things. Cool. Well, thank y'all for joining me today. Um, like every day, I appreciate when y'all are here. Um, you should look at that little resin one I did yesterday. I didn't know if that was going to work or not because those pigments and paint had been sitting out overnight. And they were pretty darn thick and there was quite a bit of paint in there. And I thought every one of these is going to gum up as soon as I put that resin in there. But it didn't. So y'all check it out. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Like always, I, I really love it when y'all are here. I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm researching and writing tags and keywords and all these little meta bits and bites and whatever. I don't understand a damn thing. I, I just do the best I can based on what I read. And so I'm trying really hard to grow it. And y'all being here and liking and subscribing is a big part of that. So thank you for doing that. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a great day.